Hello. Today's video, I'm going to talk about my 8086 project and some updates that I've made to it. Um, these by far are not uh, like a correction or a fix to the board. It's more of just tinkering with it to get it to actually boot DOS from a USB drive. So this is the main board. It's the same one I had in my last video about this. Um, let's take it apart here. So I made no modifications to the back plane or main board or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it just as is. You've got your uh, keyboard controller still. Port 61, uh, port uh, E0 that I use for the USB. And then uh, the uh, clock down here for the uh, system timer and the uh, ISA click. So no changes there. Now, what I've done when it comes to the processor card is I've been just wanting to get it to boot up. Before, I couldn't get it to boot uh, even DOS. So what I've done is I've made it 16-bit only. So I've removed all the decoding that had to do with the uh, I.O. 16 select and the memory 16 select. Um, you've got your three latches here that you, you're going to always have to have and your two transceivers here. This one here could actually probably come off for this demo. This is just your unlatched, uh, address 17 through 23 lines, uh, that are up here. And that may or may not need to be used. Uh, still got a clock, still got the two decoders for the memory read, write, IO read, write system timer and I just have one interrupt controller in here right now but this could run with two uh, it just but it's irrelevant actually so what I did though is on the back here so I had a solder in a little jumper so this is the uh, select for the transceivers so that you don't uh, you don't decode for them anymore they're just always 16-bit and then being that your interrupt controller and your system timer is 8-bit. Uh, they only sit on one of the transceivers, which mine sit on the lower side, the even side. But your address uh, 0, which is going to go from, say, on your interrupt controller port 20 to port 21, well, that's not going to work because it'll address it, but it won't provide any data because the data is coming through the other transceiver. So that's what this wire is. I connected it to uh, address line two because the system timer uses address zero and one. So I had to skip over and go up to two, which makes addressing the system timer a little uh, weird because two is zero and one is one and you have to figure it out. With that being said, I had to go into the VIOS code and modify it so this is not technically pc compatible because to set up your internet controller it's port 20 and port 24 in hex of course and then like i say on the system timer it's 40 uh, 42 and 46 and let's see so 43 i think is what let's see but anyway it's uh it's you just got to keep track of it but with that i was able to get it to boot up so still using the same memory card and this is just a prototyping card this is not by any means a finished card i took out the memory chip select enable for the 16 bit because you just don't even use it you have your odd bank over here your even bank here and as i discussed in my last video this is not done what would be the most efficient way you you literally have only the even side being addressed over here so it's every other memory location is being used and this side is only odd and every other memory location is being used so you could definitely clean that up and make it more efficient but what that does though is you just burn your rom you don't have to burn an odd or an even you, these are interchangeable because it just reads from the even and odd bytes regardless of which one you plug in so anyway let's get it all plugged in i uh will be booting this using an lcd screen so the whole point behind this was possibly 
to make a cheaper version of an 8086 where of course on here you'd have to do some logic to bring these uh interrupt controller system timer over to uh be on the even side and address correctly but other than that it would be 16-bit only you could do a v50 up here and avoid the problems altogether but with that i was looking i would need to have a 16-bit only vga card and uh it seems that they they kind of detect between 8 and 16 so anyway it's this is just a test just to just to boot it up basically so let's plug it all together here um this is just like my 8-bit boards you know i've got my extension slot here the memory doesn't use the extension slot but that extension slots for a dma controller do this carefully hopefully i don't uh disconnect any wires Just kind of put it together over here. Now the speaker doesn't work. But anyway, it's just there for looks, I guess. Really, the system timer is needed. You can't boot DOS without um, interrupt 8 being triggered. And so you need the system timer and you need your interrupt controller for enable to boot in order to boot DOS. Got some wire split there. All right. See so if you can see that. So change the little BIOS boot um, message to just say 8086. CPU, which is correct. It doesn't detect it. That's just typed in there. Now, there's a little bit of slowness when it comes to the screen. And that's not the CPU. That's the screen itself. There's some delays in there for reading and writing characters on the screen. You could probably fine-tune it a little bit to go faster. Scrolling definitely takes a minute because it, it has to read the line below and write it above. Line below, write it above all the way across. So scrolling takes a minute. So there you go, we're at the C prompt. And if you've seen any of my previous videos, the uh, backslash character on these Chinese screen does not come in as a backslash. It's that uh, other symbol there. So uh, maybe just a little bit of a demo on some, just show it works. We can type the IR. Oh, got to plug in the keyboard. So that, that printing it out to the screen, that's not necessarily the processor. It's more of the screen where it's just kind of just slowly printing to the screen. Now it is running at uh, 5 megahertz. No, actually it's running at 3.3 uh, megahertz. It's got a 10 megahertz crystal in there divided by thirds. Now because this screen is not a typical like uh, CGA or VGA screen, DOS doesn't detect it. it this is just my own version of an interrupt to write to the screen. And so your formatting for your width is off. That's why your lines are all off on that. It's a pretty large drive, actually. It's a, I think it's a three... Let's see here. Uh, so it's like a 39 megabyte drive, 40 megabyte drive. So let's just type mem. This might take a minute. It'll come out and say we got 512... Uh, Ma'am, we got a little bit used, and then it'll say you got 400 something free. That's right, there you can see 512, you got the 453 free, no upper, no reserve, no extended.
we'll type version now this is my BIOS version and if you watch a lot of my videos you'll know that uh, this is like a read-only system so right now that I don't have I didn't write the right interrupt for the uh, drive so it's read read from the drive only and then uh, the keyboard's not case sensitive it's just always uppercase no matter what you push so anyway you can see that's uh, an 8086 booting uh, from a USB drive uh, DOS 6.22 uh, here displayed on the LCD screen. So thanks for checking out my videos today.